Hi folks, I'm Mick from Summit Mountain Skills. Thanks very much for joining us today. One of the questions I'll often get asked at the end of an introductory rock course, course or a learn to lead course is, what should I go away and buy for, to build my first climbing rack? So I thought it'd be useful today to go through my interpretation on a basic introductory climbing rack for climbing outdoors. Before I come on to the Gucci shiny bits, Let's talk through this kit on my left. So you're going to need a, a nice comfy pair of rock shoes. And if you're buying shoes for the first time, go into a shop and get them fitted properly. Likewise with your helmet and your harness, go into a specialist retailer and get a proper fitting. Certainly with the helmets and harnesses, because it's PPE, they won't replace these. So make sure that if you're buying them over the internet, you're really sure that it's going to fit you. Um, helmets might be new to folks who are climbing indoors and moving outdoors. For me personally, I never climb without a helmet. My head's precious and I'm not just concerned about me falling off. Um, I'm also concerned about people kicking stones off above and potentially hitting me on the head. Helmets are super lightweight nowadays, so there's no excuse really not to wear a helmet. Uh, and then the last thing I've got here is my climbing rope. For outdoor use, for an introductory rope, I would recommend something 10 to 11, 11 millimeters thick, uh, 50 meters long, and it needs to be a full weight rope. And what I mean by a full weight rope is, is it can be used singularly on its own. Uh, if you're unsure, go to a specialist retailer and they'll advise you what to buy. Looking at my gear, I've kind of split it into sections. I've got what I call my protection here in front of me. And I'm going to put this in as I lead up the route and also to build the belay at the top of the route to fetch up my second. I've got my quick draws and slings that are going to attach the rope to the gear. And then I've got the gear at the top that I use to belay with and build my belay. Um, and also I've got a nut key. So I'll chat through that in a little bit more detail. Starting here in front of me, looking at protection, I'd recommend starting off to have a full set of wires. So these are my wires, some people call them nuts, uh, and I carry a full set and I class that as from number one up to number 11. And I've organised those on two carabiners so that I can get them in size order and I know where they are on my harness. So I carry a set of nuts and I've also got a set of hexes. And for me, I carry a full set of Torx nuts, number one through to number four. The wires, these need a constriction to go into, so they need a crack in the rock that narrows and they can be placed this way or they can also be placed because the sides are tapered they can be placed that way as well. So these need a constriction where the hexes will also fit in a constriction on their edge, like so. But they will also very cleverly work in a parallel sidey crack. And you can see that if you try and pull that sling, it will try and twist it into the crack. So these torque into the crack and you can fit it in that way or that way so it will fit two different size cracks as well as a tapered crack that way. So I carry a full set of these, one to four, the Torx nuts. Find them great. The only problem with them is you can hear you coming from a mile at the crag because it kind of sounds like you've got cowbells on your harness. I've got some cams here, but I'm going to come back to those in, in a moment. Uh, so for the starting point, I will buy these first. I've got my quick draws and I've got a selection of quick draws, different sizes and a couple of different variations. And these I will use to attach my gear to my climbing rope and also to eliminate any drag on the rope. I've got some short ones, so I carry two 20 centimetre ones. And I'll tend to use these probably first couple of runners, I will use a shorter quick draw just so it limits the chance of me falling a bigger distance. 
Then I carry five longer 25 centimeter ones. And then I also carry three 60 centimeter slings and I've folded them up like so. So I can use this as a standard quick draw or if the root wanders quite a lot, I can extend them to eliminate the drag on the root. So these are multi-purpose. To get that back to how it was folded, you just simply pop one carabiner through and clip back together, just like so. So I'll carry three of those on my harness. I've got a selection of slings. So I carry three 120 centimeter slings. And you notice I've got a couple of different types. So I personally carry two Dyneema slings and I carry one of these Aramid type. These are just a little bit stiffer. So if you're doing a thread, that makes that a little bit easier. It may be that you want to use a nylon sling. And we used to use these all the time before Dyneema became readily available on the market and these are fine. A little bit heavier, but a little bit more durable and slightly cheaper as well. So they definitely would feature on my rack because it's just personal choice. Uh, and then I've also got a 240 centimeter sling. So if I've got a really big boulder, I could throw that round. So I'll carry one of those. That's all my gear. When I get to the top of the route, I'm going to need something to build my belay with. So I carry three screw gate carabiners. And then I've got a belay plate. This particular one will take twin ropes. I've got a screw gate carabiner to belay off. And then I've also got a HMS carabiner to use to attach my climbing rope to my belay. So I'll keep that all on that carabiner. To get the gear out, if we've got some gear jammed in the crack, I carry a nut key. Really like this one, it's got a little built-in carabiner so I can clip it onto my harness. And then if it is that I'm abseiling back down, I'll have a couple of prussics on the back of my harness as well, just to protect my abseil. That is what I would recommend to go and purchase first. Um, go away and play with that gear, get used to how it works. And then if you want to add more gear, then cams can be really useful. I learned to climb without cams. So most of the routes out there you can climb without cams. Uh, cams can be really handy if you want to place a bit of gear quickly. And they'll also fit into cracks that flare open towards the bottom. So they have got a purpose as well. Um, a couple of downsides side to cams is that they can tend to move once you place them uh, and get stuck uh, and also the incredibly expensive. So it would be my last bit of my beginner's rack that I purchase, but it's definitely something that I carry. And that is my take on a basic introductory climbing rack. Hope you found that useful. If there's any questions about anything in the video, then please fire the questions over. And any comments, just stick those on our YouTube channel. If you've been enjoying the videos, then please click subscribe to keep updated with the latest films that are being added every week. Check out our Facebook page, Summit Mountain Skills, to see what we've been doing out on the hill. And have a look at our website, summitmountainskills.com, for our upcoming courses. Thanks very much for watching. Hope to see you out on the hill. Happy climbing.